In this video, we're going to continue our series on the history of medieval science by covering the subject of medieval medicine. I'm Kolo Ink History, and in this video, we're going to cover the medical developments and practices in medieval Europe the establishment of medicine as a science, as well as the introduction of human dissections and the establishment of hospitals. Stay tuned! The history of medicine is in several aspects different from other parts of the history of science, since it not only covers theories and methods, but also the history of how medicine was practiced, as well as medical institutions. Similar to other aspects of the history of science, much of the ancient medical writings were lost in Western Europe following the fall of the Western Roman Empire, with only a few parts being preserved by the Latin encyclopedists that were covered in part 1 of the series. It should be noted, however, that while much of the ancient medical writings were lost, it's unlikely that it had much effect on the medical practices that were carried out by people living in the former empire, due to most people both before and after the fall living in rural areas, where they were getting their medical treatments from local sources, such as domestic medicine and local healers. The parts of the ancient medical corpus that did survive did so mainly within monasteries, where it was preserved and to some degree practiced throughout the political instability that characterized most of the early Middle Ages. However, like with other parts of medieval intellectual history, both medical theories and medical practices saw a considerable transformation with the advent of the 12th century renaissance that occurred in the high Middle Ages. As Western Europe pulled itself up from the political instability of the early Middle Ages, more parts of the ancient medical corpus were rediscovered by the translation movement, and the ancient medical practices started to expand out of the monasteries and into Europe's growing cities where local doctors started to put up shops. In order to understand the different aspects of who these doctors were, a good modern analogy to use is that of carpentry. Carpentry covers a wide continuum from the building trades like engineering and architecture on one side to the amateur carpenter who does home repairs on the weekends on the other. Similarly to carpentry, medieval medical practitioners included people who practiced domestic medicine to medical practitioners who got their education via apprenticeship to the university educated physicians. As we will see, it was especially with the university-educated physicians that we see some of the most important developments of medicine that occurred in the Middle Ages. As the early Middle Ages passed into the High Middle Ages, medicine among the educated elite started to move from being seen as a craft to more and more being perceived as a profession that one needed a formal education in order to properly carry out. The historical accounts that are available indicates that formal medical studies seem to first have appeared in cathedral schools in the 10th and 11th centuries, and with the advent of the medieval universities in the late 11th and 12th centuries, medicine soon started to become part of the university education. As medicine started to assert its place in the universities, there were growing desires among the medical scholars for the instituting of formal educational credentials that all medical practitioners should need to acquire to be allowed to work with medicine. The driving force behind this desire were not mere intellectual curiosity or a will to combat charlatans, but mostly a desire for increased status and professional development. However, due to the amount of formally educated physicians obviously being too small to accommodate the large and growing population in Europe, these sorts of formal requirements had little effect in most places, but the development is still an important part in the history of medicine, as it was one of the main drivers for the transition of medicine from being a craft to becoming a science. So, when it comes to the history of medicine as a science, what did the medieval intellectuals actually believe about cures and diseases? 
The fundamental theories of the seas and treatment in the universities during the Middle Ages were mainly based upon the works of ancient thinkers such as Hippocrates and Galen, and started from the assumption that every person has a characteristic and a temperament that's determined by the four fluids and their corresponding qualities which are hot, cold, wet and dry. These four fluids were thought to be the vehicle for the body to function, and a balance between the fluids were associated with health, while an imbalance between the fluids were associated with illness. A person's ideal balance between the fluids were known by the medieval thinkers as a person's constitution. Each person's constitution is unique and were thought to be influenced by several external forces, one of the main ones being the positioning of the planets at the day of the person's birth. In addition to astrology, the balance between a person's fluids were also thought to be associated with daily external conditions, such as the air a person breathes, food and drink consumed, a person's activity, rest and state of mind. In order to determine which measures to employ, a physician would therefore need to inquire into a person's lifestyle in order to acquire his or her specific complexion, and the habits required to maintain it. Ideally, a physician should closely monitor the patient's activities over an extended period of time, something which only were realistic for physicians who were employed by a wealthy patron. When it came to treatments, various techniques were available to achieve a balance between the fluids, such as changing a person's diet, medical drugs, and if heroic treatments seemed to be called for, it was possible to eliminate excess fluids by bloodletting. These views on disease and treatment shows that the perceived role of the physicians in the Middle Ages were not to cleanse the body from disease, but rather to preventively work with the body's natural processes in order to help it to restore its health. However, sometime more drastic measures were needed, and in that case, a patient usually needed to take help from a surgeon. Likely to the surprise of the modern reader, surgery were in a large part separate from medicine as a whole, and remained a craft rather than a profession throughout the Middle Ages, and something that was seen as beneath the dignity of the university-educated physician. In order to be able to perform a successful surgery, one needed to have some degree of anatomical knowledge. For most of the early Middle Ages, knowledge of human anatomy in Western Europe was very slim, but that came to change during the 12th century renaissance, which saw two very important phenomena in the history of medicine. The first one is the translation of Galen's anatomical work into Latin, and the second, which in the long term was even greater, is the introduction of human dissections in the medieval universities. The dissection of a human body had been culturally forbidden in most parts of the ancient world due to the belief that it would disrupt the ghost of the dead individual, which is why the anatomical knowledge of ancient thinkers such as Galen to a large extent were dependent upon guesswork and analogies. However, with the rise of Christianity and the decline of Greco-Roman paganism, this view of the human body disappeared. An historical misconception related to the history of medicine that is still somewhat common today is that the medieval church opposed human dissections. However, as a leading scholar in the history of medicine Catherine Park points out, is the evidence pointing to this slim to non-existent, with the only evidence somewhat indicating this being two medieval papal bulls. One forbidding monks and priests to carry out certain surgeries, and another forbidding a funeral practice that included removing the flesh from the body by burning it. None of which are related to the practice of human dissection. Human dissections in the High and Late Middle Ages were generally rare, but that's because few people were willing to allow the bodies of recently deceased relatives to be dissected, due to it being considered very shameful. Because of this, most of the corpses dissected in the medieval universities belonged to condemned criminals who did not have any relatives living in nearby municipalities. 
It should be noted that the impact of the advent of human dissections, while having an important long-term impact on the history of medicine, did not have much short-term impact on the existing medical theories. This is because the medieval physicians did not use dissections for the purpose of experimentation, but rather for pedagogy, using observations of human anatomy to explain the ancient theories of the body, rather than challenging them. When it comes to the history of medicine, the medieval world saw the rise and spread of one of history's most celebrated medical achievements, the hospital. The origins of the hospital can be hard to determine, depending on what definition one decides to use, but if we define a hospital as an institution dedicated to treating the sick, and including the provision of special medical care, we can trace its origins to the early Middle Ages. According to the scholar David Limburg, the origins of the hospital seems to lie in the Byzantine Empire, were probably due to the ideals of Christian charity, institutions dedicated to treating the sick with special medical care were established. The earliest we know of being the hospital of Saint Samson in the 7th century. This institution soon spread throughout the empire and also became well established in the Islamic world. In Western Europe, the hospital started to become established first in the 12th century as a result of the activity of the Knights Hospitallers, who, as their name hints at, started to establish and run hospitals after the Byzantine model. The first hospital they are known to have established is the Hospital of St. John in Jerusalem, but throughout the High Middle Ages, they also established many hospitals in southern France and Italy, with other religious orders as well as secular groups starting to take after. A good example of what a medieval hospital looked like is the Pantocrator Hospital in Constantinople, which in the High Middle Ages had space for 55 patients and a staff of 47 employees, which included physicians and surgeons. To conclude this part of the series, do the history of medieval medicine have many aspects? It includes the loss and recovery of the ancient medieval theories, as well as the transition of medicine from being seen as a craft, to being seen as a science. As you might see, do the Middle Ages not see much challenge to the ancient medical theories, but it saw the creation of the institutional framework, in which the ancient view of medicine later could be challenged, and that, in my opinion, is the medieval world's most important contribution to the history of medicine. Today, I hope you learned something new about the history of medicine, as well as about medieval history in general. And don't forget that if you like this video and want to see more videos like it, hit the like, share and subscribe buttons.